What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Bible Wisdom YouTube channel. I wanted to talk a little bit about how um, you know we should start desiring heaven now just because there comes a time you know for all people where it would be a select group that is going to be in heaven and specifically the New Jerusalem and I think it's so important for us as people to put a lot of emphasis on heaven and you know for those that are not Christians to really consider becoming a Christian um, you know and it's not necessarily from the standpoint of uh, just a religion so to speak even though you know following God is religious um, but it's really following after the will of our Creator instead of denying God and denying Jesus Christ and so um, I wanted to talk about how the Bible uh, gives some instances in Scripture I'm not gonna mention um, every single scripture that um the bible kind of talks about how you know at some point in the future only a select group of people will be in the new jerusalem and all others will be locked out and so um you know i think i was watching some unrelated uh video and I sort of thought of this of, you know, um, this I was just reminded of how God said this. And I think so many times um, we can experience this same type of feeling in a way where, you know, there are some things in this life that we may not necessarily have access to, you know, and it may involve a certain amount of money. It may involve um, a certain a level of, um, you know, power type of thing of, uh, you know, maybe a rank as far as, uh, you know, how certain things work in this world. And so um, that same type of theme, I think, still carries over into the new world as far as God clearly saying that those who do not have faith in Jesus Christ are going to be separated from those that do have faith in Jesus Christ and so um, hopefully I didn't say that backwards those that don't have faith in Jesus Christ are going to be separated from those that do have faith in Jesus Christ and so um, let's take a look at Luke 13 the Gospel of Luke and this is one area where, you know, um, amongst a few other areas that God sort of um, has a separation <clears throat> between people. It says um, in Luke chapter 13, starting at verse 22, it says, Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he went, always pressing on towards Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? He replied, work hard to enter the narrow door to God's kingdom, for many will try to enter but will fail. When the master of the house has locked the door, it will be too late. You will stand outside knocking and pleading, Lord, open the door for us. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, but we ate and drank with you and you taught in our streets. And he will reply, I tell you, I don't know you or where you come from. Get away from me, all you who do evil. So, you know, um, I think it's so important for us to, you know, realize that at some point, you know, um, some of the tables are going to be turned as far as, you know, um, the exclusion that we as Christians feel sometimes in regards to the people of the world um, I think that sometimes you know um, we can take notice of how you know we as Christians are sometimes excluded from th different things even though you know um, some things we definitely don't want to be a part of because you know there is sin taking place and evil taking place 
but um, I love how you know um, God is going to turn the tables on people who would exclude others from their plans and um, you can really see this concept um, as far as you know Revelation 13 when the mark of the beast comes out you know and there is a buying and selling and those who will not worship the image of the beast you know will be killed you know I love how God turns the tables on people and it's all those who you know dislike Jesus Christ all those who dislike God and do not choose to serve him will be excluded and we will be the ones living you know um it's unfortunate though that you know obviously there are people that are going to be lost um you know and I think for us I think it is a reminder of how we should do our best to walk with God in the right way um, you know, we we all do make mistakes sometimes, you know, there are sometimes we may say the wrong thing, but, you know, we have the guide of the word of God where we can get back on track when we do miss it. And of course, we are not necessarily trying to miss it on purpose. At least that should be our mindset for, you know, those of us who care about making it. And so, you know, um. It's not necessarily a good thing to exclude someone from something, but, you know, when you think about maybe a reason for why the wicked would exclude the righteous is because, you know, they do not like the light. And so in some form or fashion, you know, they don't want to be reminded about, you know, the difference between right and wrong. You know, um, they don't want to be reminded in Revelation 13 when that happens in the future. They don't want to be reminded that it's wrong to worship anything or anyone but the true God. You know, they don't want to be reminded about how certain sins are wrong um, or all sin is wrong. You know, and, you know, it's it's clear that. You know, one of the reasons why they are killing, you know, um, I view it as not necessarily only Christians, but anyone who refuses to take the mark of the beast, because when sometimes I do see it, how, you know, there it's possible that someone refuses to take the mark of the beast, um, you know, even though they are not necessarily Christian. I don't know. Will that be a group of people in the future where, you know, sometimes people, you know, don't necessarily go along with everything, even though they may not necessarily be Jesus followers. And so, you know, I kind of view Revelation 13 as, you know, a persecution to mainly focus probably at, you know, Jesus followers. But, you know, a persecution on anyone really that does not take the mark of the beast and worship its image. And so, you know, clearly, um, as we can turn to Revelation, we can see how, you know, God is excluding them. And I think, you know, possibly it's because, you know, uh, how they have excluded the light from the darkness, um, you know, and there's no really way for them to uh you know light and darkness can't really coexist either but you know um this could be one of the reasons why you know uh things play out as they do and so um revelation 22 um i want to say it's um verse 15 and so it says Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to lie, live a lie. And so when you look at, you know, um, what Jesus is talking about here, he's talking about, you know, the city, the new Jerusalem, how, you know, when you think about how 
you know, heaven and the new earth is going to be a place where everyone, you know, on some level, it seems like, obviously, I don't know what all people think about, but on some level, it would be an, a, um, a place where people would want to live, you know, um, it's a place where people would want to be a part of, you know, when you think about maybe some of these places on earth that are only for the super rich or you know um they have some sort of ridiculous price tag on it even though you know i was kind of wanting to make a video on how you know in some level you know following jesus does sort of have a high price to it if you think about it from the perspective of turning away from sin when you could be sort of enticed to do some sin you know, uh, following Jesus is sort of giving up on your own desires, you know, especially that becomes evident when Jesus says, deny yourself and follow Christ. And so, um, you know, especially when you think about maybe turning down alcohol, turning down marijuana, you know, um, turning down certain things that we know are sinful, um, but may not necessarily be um, completely evil to the sense of, you know, some of the worst types of sins. And so it's still sin. And so, um, you know, when you think about it, you know, following Jesus could sort of have a high price to it in of itself. But I think obviously, you know, God, Jesus has done most of the work you know, as far as what we are required of, you know, uh, doing, you know, which is faith in Jesus Christ and believing in Jesus in order to make it into heaven. And so from one perspective, it's not really a cost, you know, as far as, you know, Isaiah, you know, uh, has a verse in there where it says how God is calling us to buy from him without silver, without a price. It is basically free uh, for anyone who wants it. And so, um, you know, there really isn't a cost to following Jesus. But, you know, especially as your mind shift, mind changes and, you know, God, what the Bible calls renewing our mind, where, you know, giving up some of these things, which are once enticing, are not necessarily a high cost because, we come to that realization how, you know, those things are unprofitable for us to do and they aren't as great as they may initially seem. And so, um, you know, clearly, you know, there are different instances where God is going to sh separate, um, you know, the people and, you know, have only a place where those who have faith in Jesus Christ can live. Um, let's look at Matthew 25. And we see a bit of a separation here. And this is kind of my go-to scripture sometimes. Just because, you know, um, it, it is kind of interesting, you know, in that, you know, I think, you know, how God, you know, exalts some people, you know, and by exalting some people may maybe it points out others who are not necessarily living right you know um that seems to be uh sort of um making making the makings of an interesting story when you see someone doing what's right and getting rewarded for it and others who are doing what's wrong not necessarily getting the same reward as those that do what's right and so, um, you know, I won't necessarily read all of Matthew 25, um, just because I think, you know, most of us should know this story pretty well, but, um, starting at verse 10, it says, but while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridemaids returned, 
They stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you, too, must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Then, if you read on in Matthew 25, there is another separation between servants. Um, starting at verse 24, it says, Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant, and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant, and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To the one who use, use, to the, to those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this use, useless servant into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so you know um obviously you know it's not necessarily good for a servant to be thrown into a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth you know because god uh, i read earlier in one of my podcasts how god does not take pleasure in uh the death of the wicked but i did want to emphasize in this video of how you know um there is an exaltation to be expected once we get to heaven over the wicked even though in this world the wicked are sort of exalted in this world um and you know even though jesus is talked about and i be do believe jesus is exalted in this world but it seems to be sort of different when you really look at it you know um jesus seems to come off even though you know there's so much to learn about jesus uh jesus seems to come off as you know someone who is not necessarily uh you know uh proud about being the creator of the whole entire world and you know there's different instances in scripture where jesus sort of uh you know operates in a way where he doesn't necessarily want um he does want praise but he, he doesn't do it in the same way as maybe the wicked are doing it and um i know there's some instances where jesus um in, you know slipped away in a crowd you know um when he was going to be made king he didn't do it you know at least during that time and he slipped away through the crowd and so you know when we look at who is exalted here in this world you know and they try to push out you know all that is good and righteous and anything about the bible or the light you know especially when you have that realization of how you know the bible is you know really the only righteousness uh the only thing that has a very high standard of righteousness and you know that points out different sins i haven't necessarily looked into um in depth you know some of these other religions but um you know you can tell that these religions do not necessarily um you know talk about righteousness and you know point out wickedness in the same way that the bible does and you know obviously that the true god does and so i think that um we have something good to look forward to um you know that's one of the main messages of scripture even though you know sometimes life can be hard and you know we can feel left out you know um especially you know when we sometimes um you know are doing the right thing you know as even when we have turned away from doing the wrong thing 
and we feel like we're doing the right thing you know um we are not necessarily looked upon in this world as you know um as we should be and so um <clears throat> We have to look forward to the future and i think that you know when we put a lot of emphasis on you know heaven um you know we can really see how god is going to um you know really exalt all of us you know uh not necessarily one or two people you know and i think that um we have a lot of good things to look forward to and so um that's pretty much it for this video um, you know, there's probably some more scriptures that I probably could have brought out. Um, <clears throat> and I think that, um, you know, I'll just leave it at that. I don't know if I want to really say anything else. So, um, thanks so much. And I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.